The film begins in a school cafeteria on what is by all accounts a standard day, until a young lady named Grace Summerfield is sitting frozen, when her eyes sparkle and the can she is holding is squashed without her daring to move. Beauty falls over and kicks the bucket. We hear the voice of Ruby Daly saying how Grace was the first of numerous kids to kick the bucket from an illness that would become known as Ion, idiopathic adolescent acute neurodegeneration. We see President Gray examining how his child is made due because of a fix they are trying out on tainted kids. We then slice to a youthful Ruby on her birthday as she celebrates with her folks Molly and Paul. Around evening time, Ruby goes into her folks room and contacts Molly's arm, so, all in all Ruby's contamination seemed to show. Toward the beginning of the day, Ruby goes into the kitchen. Yet Molly doesn't perceive her or know what her identity is. Notwithstanding Ruby's requests, Molly secures her in a carport and trusts that specialists will come and remove Ruby. Ruby is brought to a camp, Thurmond, which is lodging every one of the enduring tainted youngsters. One young fellow endeavors to escape, just for equipped gatekeepers to hold him down. He utilizes his brain control ability to make one of the gatekeepers shoot themselves before the others can find the young fellow. Ruby is then brought to a testing office where her powers, likewise of brain control, Group her as an orange. The specialist testing her attempts to infuse something into her, however she contacts his arm and has him arrange her as green. Ruby enjoys the following six years at Thurmond with other green children. The others are isolated into blue or yellow, yet there are no reds or oranges since they were thought of as excessively risky. They are lorded over by the brutal Captain McManus and his band of soldiers of fortune. The officials at Thurmond are trying another subatomic recurrence that makes the children draw back in misery and makes Ruby drop. Ruby awakens in a bed addressed by a Dr. Begbie, or Kate she is fundamentally more amiable to Ruby than any other person at Thurmond, and she needs to help Ruby. Kate leaves and slips Ruby a note saying that the others realize she is orange and that they are wanting to kill her, so she advises Ruby to meet her in the engine compartment. Subsequent to doing as such, Kate helps Ruby departure the office similarly as the officials are searching for Ruby. As Kate endeavors to drive away, she is come by a gatekeeper who nearly sees Ruby. However Ruby purposes her ability to dismiss the watchman so they can leave. Kate drives Ruby to find a gathering called the Children's League so they can safeguard her. She gives Ruby a GPS beacon to use on the off chance that they get isolated. They meet at a corner store with Kate's sweetheart Rob who hands Ruby supplies. Ruby slips and Rob gets her, which gives her catch an impression access to his recollections, showing that he was among the individuals who generally dealt with the contaminated children and probably did terrible things to them. She goes into the store and sees a young lady. Susume slash Su who controls electrical flows and does as such to attempt to move away from Ruby. She pursues Su, attempting to move away from Kate and Rob. Ruby begs Su to let her inside, and she goes. The van that they are in then drives away. The other two people in the van, Liam and Charles slash Chubbs are anxious when they see Ruby in there, thinking she was shipped off secure them, yet she lets them know she's a green. As they keep on driving, they are sought after by a tracer known as Lady Jane. Kate and Rob likewise endeavor to make up for lost time. Ruby jumps in the driver's seat as Liam utilizes his ability to pull trees and prompt Flotsam and Jetsam to send the vehicle's rough terrain. The children quit driving, and Ruby endeavors to leave so she can return home, yet Liam stops her and says they are making a beeline for the East River, which probably holds a compound where tainted children can remain, rest, and eat. Subsequent to sharing a bite, they keep advancing to East River, when Ruby notices being taken to the League. Liam says they can't help her, as he was selected by them to be a deadly warrior so he deserted them. McManus figures out that Ruby has gotten away, and he kills one of the specialists who concentrated on her. He arranges the tracers to pursue her. Ruby investigates Sue's brain as she dozes, and she sees a memory of when Liam utilized his powers to break various children out of his camp, yet some didn't make it since they were shot by officials. They then keep pushing ahead, halting in a shopping center for provisions. They are then caught by other super-powered kids who think they are tracers. In the wake of accounting for themselves, Different children permit Ruby and her companions to remain for the evening. The children all lounge around a pit fire discussing the East River compound. Ruby contacts the skin of one of the shopping center children and he said Edo and that's it. Later on, after the others are dozing, Ruby and Chubbs hear a recurrence on the radio shouting to other super-powered kids. In the first part of the day, Liam drives Ruby back to her old home, yet when she arrives, she believes she can go inside to her folks since she accepts it's her shortcoming that they failed to remember her after she deleted their recollections. She gets back to the gathering, and they are trapped by Lady Jane. Before she can take the children in, Ruby snatches her hand and powers her to walk unendingly, regardless of whether she gets strained and hungry, and Jane goes along. This works yet additionally makes Ruby drop, and the others understand she's an orange. Liam and Chubb squabble about how to manage Ruby, 
yet she hears and simply chooses to leave in order to not bring them any longer hardship. They persuade her to remain on the grounds that while they are disturbed that she lied, they don't believe she should go off all alone, and they tell her all right she's orange. The children all keep strolling down a path until they track down Edo. At Edo, the children meet Clancy Gray, child of the president who was formerly circumventing saying he's been restored, when in reality, he just got away from the office he was housed in and is giving shelter to other got away from youngsters. He ends up being an orange too and he invests private energy with Ruby so he can help her outfit her maximum capacity, yet Liam could do without how close they are getting. In mystery, Clancy is informing McManus. Clancy tells Ruby how his dad had him tried on many times until he just deserted him. He takes Ruby around the compound with the goal that she can test the strength of her capacities, such as venturing into a contention among Chubbs and one more youngster by controlling the youngster's brain. Chubbs later tells Ruby how he feels the compound is the same than the camps they were at because of the multitude of rules they need to adhere to. Ruby goes to Clancy to inquire as to whether Chubbs can utilize his PC to contact his folks, yet Clancy denies for believing that Chubbs might offer their current area. All things considered, Clancy needs to sort out how Ruby can delete people group's recollections by venturing into her brain. He then attempts to compel himself onto her to attempt to delete that memory, however she pushes him off and returns to her companions, attempting to inspire them to leave the spot. That evening, McManus and his hooligans make an appearance to gather together the children for a reap. Clancy arises as the instigator of the entire thing, with McManus letting him know that his dad is caught in a similar cushion cell he was in. Clancy needs to involve the children as a feature of a military for vengeance against his detainers, with Ruby close by since they are so strong. Ruby makes McManus shoot himself in the head as Tsu goes to raise a ruckus around town to destroy different tracers with power. The children run for it, however more tracers plunge upon the compound and release the reds who inhale fire at everybody. Liam utilizes his powers to safeguard his companions with a cargo holder, and afterward fling it upon the Reds. Clancy goes for Ruby once more, attempting to tell her how he can fix her. She resists him and controls the pilot of a tracer helicopter to come crashing down, allowing Ruby and her companions to move away. In the disorder, Chubbs is harmed severely. Ruby contacts Kate with the tracker she gave her. The following morning, Chubbs is oblivious. The children are found by Kate, Rob, and different officials who carry them to the league. The children are placed in a clinic for recuperation. Kate goes into Ruby's space to persuade her to remain with them and assist with changing things since she has serious areas of strength for so uncommon among different children. When Rob steps in, Ruby controls his considerations so he can let her be. Ruby believes them should let Liam go so he will not need to kill for them. She goes into Liam's room and enjoys one final second with him before she kisses him and eradicates every one of his recollections of her. Accordingly, he is allowed to proceed to follow his own way. In Ruby's end portrayal, Liam runs off all alone, while we see that Clancy made do and is being arrested. Kate carries Ruby to an arena loaded with kids as she plans to lead them toward another future. That is it for today thank you for watching see you in the next one.